Hello, I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your game and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. Tonight, the question we are answering is what's in this box? We are going to try to open Tower of Madness without going insane. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off. I'd like to welcome you to a tabletop bellhop cardboard coat check. So that's the silly name we give our unboxing videos. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is unboxing this game, Tower of Madness, from Smirk and Dagger Games. Uh, this is a modern version of the classic game Kerplunk with a Lovecraftian theme. I gotta admit, I've never played this, I just think it looks really cool, and it has a great table presence. As, as I run local events here in Windsor, Ontario, one of the best ways to get new gamers invested and interested in your game is to have something flashy on the table. This is especially true if you run gaming events at public places. And I'm starting to run a brand new event that's Saturday at a video gaming cafe where we're trying to get them to broaden their minds and cover more types of gaming, so also tabletop gaming. And what I want to be able to do is have these video gamers see this tower with all these tentacles on it on the table and be ooh, what's that i think this game's gonna be perfect for that but i've not actually seen this game except from a distance i don't know exactly what's in the box so you're gonna get to come on that journey with me i'm gonna open this up and i'm gonna give you my thoughts as i open it live as you see it so again this is tower of madness from smirk and dagger games um i think it came out a couple years ago it's not uh, two years ago it's not brand new but it's also not old uh, so, the one thing I do have to read off, because it made me laugh, is investigate unspeakable horrors without losing your marbles. I thought that was pretty clever. Um, it's a three-dimensional clock tower, stands 15 inches tall, filled with marbles. 30 otherworldly tentacles push through the tower walls in every direction in this high-tension dice game of Lovecraft-inspired horror. Each location card has its own unique dice challenge. Utilize forbidden knowledge to gain the advantage but fail and you will slip into insanity or summon Cthulhu and end the world itself. There we go. It says it is for three to five players, ages 10 plus, which seems a little surprising. Maybe the cards are more confusing than I thought. 40 to 60 minutes. 40 to 60 minutes to play Kerplunk. There's got to be more to this game than just pulling tentacles. So I've got an exacto here. I'll try not to slice myself open and make a blood sacrifice to the other gods before I've even played the game. It's a nice solid box. Gotta admit, I'm not a huge fan of the size and shape. This is not gonna fit well on my bookshelf. A little bit annoying, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm not one to complain about box size that often. I've seen much worse. All right, we have trying to slide this. It's coming, it's coming. All right, I'm gonna show this to you. Oh, I see koi fish. It's just gonna make us see more. Insane. You're gonna see this before me. So you go insane and let me know if it's safe. If, if you don't reply. Am I good? Can I can I look? All right. So we have rule book. We have a ton of tentacles. Sorry, I don't know why that's so funny. Uh, they look like they're on spits or on skewers. Uh, then we have a bunch of cardboard and stuff. But first, we're gonna take a look. We have Nevermore. So ads on the side. Other stuff from Smirk and Dagger Games. Oh, two bent rule books today while unboxing. Hey companies, talk to your packaging people. Some of us are collectors and don't like to see our rule books bent. So, Tower of Madness, even though it's not on the cover, interestingly enough, is by Kurt Covert, which is a name I know well. Uh, nice, evocative cover. Rule book not too thick. Lots and lots of nice colored examples. I dig that. I like this. The different marbles actually mean different things. There's a game here. I like it. So blue marbles are discovery, white marbles are spells, red marbles are madness, green marbles are doom, and yellow marbles are the lead investigator. There's also some custom dice, there's a first player token, there's a whole bunch of oblong for directional intersections. I don't know, there's instructions on how to put all the tentacles in, making some kind of elder sign. Uh, rule book, nice. Big, easy to read. I like it. I'm getting old. Big letters for lazy eyes. I dig it. Okay, the investigator marble doesn't go in the box. It goes on some kind of tracker. 
Looks like lots of examples. Ruble looks solid. Well, except for the fact it's bent. Uh, not numbered, but that felt like about five pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages. Sorry, seven pages. All right. Bag of tentacles. I have to take a tentacle out. Ooh, tentacles. Bag of tentacles. Like I said, it's a retheme of Kerplunk. What do you expect? Oddly, I didn't see a how to assemble the tower section. So we have the top of the tower. And then we have the cardboard tower, which appears to be inside out at this point. I don't want to rip this. Why? How does this? There we go. Tower. Tower. It might make a good dice tower, too. Ooh, very, very solid base. Already punched chits. That's nice. I like anything already punched. Already punch is good. Uh, there's a whole lot of elder signs and stuff on here. It's cool. We'll put this off to the side. Go through the tokens really quick. Nice and thick. I like that. Bonus points. Uh, that's creepy. Don't know what that is. Don't look at that too long. Might not be safe. A okay, bunch of square tokens. Uh, again, no clue. There, there's marbles on the other side. Looks like buildings. Again, I don't know how to play. Just taking a look at the components right now. Getting these back in this bag may drive me nuts. Okay, I'm just going to give up on that right now. Put them in the base here. Uh, interestingly paper packaged. Just to make sure, you know, standard buys don't see anything they shouldn't see and go nuts. All right. Some kind of player boards where you're probably going to put all your marbles as they come out. That'd be my guess. Uh, nothing. These are all identical. No, they're all identical player boards. There's no, doesn't seem to be player colors or anything. Fair enough. Not something that's needed by every game. And well, the marbles, which I had no idea were all unique. Like, they mean different things. It's cool. They're all cat's eye style. Remind me of the marbles I had growing up. Oh, let's see. Oh, come on, camera. Why are you focusing on my eye when that thing's right there? All right, I'm going to give up. You can basically tell. Red ones and white ones and blue ones and so on. I'm not going to dump all the marbles. There's also green ones in there. Lots of marbles. They're marbles. They're exactly what you'd expect. They're not plastic or anything. They're glass marbles. Then we have some thicker location style Location cards um, with a nice resealable package to put them in. Again, today, I am not going to waste my time putting that back in. You don't want to watch me fight with that. Location cards. Art's good for what it is. Uh, you know, a bunch of Massachusetts looking churches and buildings. Text at the bottom. Numbers. Who knows? Victory points. These, I can tell, match the dice symbols. The Yogoth Cavern. If you roll three of a kind or more in a single throw, add a new location to the bottom of the location deck. So I don't know. Each, each location is going to do something different. Trying to get the text to show up. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. Art's good enough. Nothing wrong with it. Esoteric Order of the Dragon. These two dice may be treated as wild. I, again, it definitely no. don't just pull a thing and not make marbles drop. I like that. Looks like there's quite a bit more game here than I was expecting, and that's awesome. Abigail Hunt. So it looks like we have character cards. Yep, yeah, a whole bunch of character cards, and then some other stuff. So character cards, again, art's nice. You got your typical looking mythos investigators. Abigail obviously being female, so that's a nice touch. At least they're not all male investigators. I'm not going to go through the old deck. I'll do one more. Artwork solid. Then we have, okay, a bunch of different insanities. Okay, bonus points. I like that. I've, I have been a fan of insanity systems since Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay First Edition. Um, there's a card here that has sane on one side and insane on the other. And there are a ton of these. Look at them all. Whole pile of them. 
So, for example, this scene says, if you're sane, after you roll, re-roll any number of dice you just rolled. But if you're insane, after a player is done rolling, force a re-roll of both their mind and discovery dice. So it doesn't sound like a silly insane thing, like you can't talk out loud while you're playing. It's more mechanical insanity. I was slightly hoping they would have had some kind of like slate role-playing element there. So that's it. Bunch of insanity cards, bunch of character cards, bunch of location cards. Um, I'm going to tip this up in a second to show you because there's some nice spots to put all this stuff. I'm not putting them back in the baggie, but there is a nice double layered, right, for the cards. So you get the bottom cards there, location cards nest right on top. Fits nice and tight. That's nice. Uh, and then up here we have the dice, which I don't know. Okay, it's not me being magic. Look at that. Oh, it's blowing my mind. I don't know. The dice are magic. You can't roll them. <laughs> it's kind of gross that my dice are all stuck together. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're sticky. That's... Oh, they're, like, really sticky. I hope that wasn't intentional, because that's kind of gross. So, a set of sticky dice. Um, looks like they're all identical. Yuck, my dice are sticky. <laughs> you know, I was joking about going insane while opening this. Like, really sticky. Look. Sticky. Ew. What the heck, Smirk and Dagger? Why Why are my dice sticky? I shouldn't be able to do that. That's that's disturbing. Ugh. Ah. I gotta wash my hands after this video. Alright, uh, so they're number one through six. There's swirly symbol on the one. Uh, heart on the two. A brain on the three. A, I think that's an elder sign on the four. Maybe that's an elder sign. I don't know. The branch thing. I've seen it. I am not a big mythos dude. Oh, no. I think that's the elder sign. So, I don't know. There's a bunch of symbols on the very... Like, now my hands are sticky. Sticky dice. Okay, I'm grossed out by the sticky dice. What the heck? Other than the sticky dice... Oh, again, nesting. Things are going to nest nice. Uh, assuming the marbles were in here... This is actually going to fit nice right there. I dig it. Um, do I try to build this tower? I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to do that in the video. It looks simple enough. Um, one thing I do see right away, you are not going to be able to store it with the tower assembled. So it's something that's going to come apart and get rebuilt every time you play. Oh, look at that. Magnet. That's cool. Woo. Okay, that almost makes up for the sticky dice. That's cool. The tower is held together by a magnet. That's impressive. Bonus points there. Doesn't make up for sticky dice. Bonus points, though. Um, you know what? It's going to take me too long to put this together and slide everything through and show the marbles. I'm sure you get the idea. Uh, it looks pretty cool when it's assembled. That is something I've seen from across the room. It's just going to take way too long. Uh, you know what? Maybe when I finish it, I'll do that as bonus content. And then Sean can maybe throw it at the end of the video. So I'm going to say my goodbyes, and then I'm going to open this back up and put it together. How's that sound? Okay. So you got the basic overview, everything that's in here. That was Tower of Madness from Smirk and Dagger Games. Smirk and Dagger. Um, way more than I thought. Way more impressive. Way more of a game than I was expecting. I was expecting Kerplunk with a Cthulhu theme. There's some dice involved. There's different characters you can play. I haven't read the rules, but just looking through the components, you can see there's different locations you investigate. The different marbles that fall out of the tower mean different things. I'm impressed. I'm actually way more excited to play this than I was originally. Uh, because as I said at the beginning, I bought this as something to show off at public play events to catch people's attention. And it looks like I'm going to get a really good game out of it too. So thumbs up right there, Smirk and Dagger. But what the heck? Why are the dice sticky? That's gross. Sticky dice. I, I didn't actually want my sanity tested. Sticky dice. Ugh. Okay, seriously, I'm going to have to like Google how to build the Tower of Madness roof. This is silly. All on the sides, just in a little bit. And it'll slip all right. right on top of that. That's and supposed that's to go here. here. All stay together very nicely. Huh? Actually, Based on the cut and how this is you might get a there we go. So, here we go. Tower. We have a fully assembled tower. So, I gotta admit, the magnet up here, not nearly as well done as the magnet down below. So, here we have a tower. Now, we start 
putting sticks through. Yeah, I'm missing a tentacle. I don't remember dropping one. I'm missing a tentacle. So, there we go. We have seeded the tower. And well, obviously, we're going to do stuff like pull these out. So, one. Two, three. Oh, a red one fell out. Ta da. Here, let's turn it so you can. Oh, the. Four, five. Oh, no. A blue one fell out. Say yo. Don't, don't bump it. Six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, that would have been horrible. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, oh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I am missing a tentacle. Well, that's not cool. Sticky dice and I'm missing a tentacle. A little disappointed in that. All right, so I guess I have to contact Smirk and Dagger Games and see what I have to do about getting another tentacle. All right, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Uh, you can find my website at tabletopbellhop.com where you will find all kinds of gaming content, reviews, news, and links to our podcast, which is the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. We record that every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern right here at twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. You can join us as my co-host Sean and I answer your gaming and game night questions. Speaking of questions, you can send those to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Speaking of those of you on YouTube, it'd be awesome if you hit that subscribe button. For those of you on Twitch, that follow button would be nice. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano. If you dig the content you've seen from us, it would be great if you headed over to patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop. And I would love it to see you tip the bellhop. Thank you. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.